Just take your Bibles this morning quickly and um, let's come to the Word of God. Father, we thank you for your Word today. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your life working in our, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who enjoyed Leanne Burrell last Sunday? Was that amazing? And uh, as she talked about, there's plenty of opportunity in this church to get fed and to receive God's Word into your life in a powerful way. Um, I wanted just to bring a thought. I, I perceive I'm only going to start this this morning, and we'll get to it a bit more later on. But I just know that the church at large needs the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Leanne kind of alluded to this last Sunday. And um, in the book of Luke, chapter 4, and Fiona's very graciously taken a lot of my verses already from my message this morning, as you always do, you know. Isn't the Holy Spirit wonderful? You'd think that we had a conversation before the meeting. said, now, you just take these verses and use these and that'll be great. But you know what? In Luke 4, verse 1, reading from the Passion, it says, From the moment of His baptism, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, Jesus overflowed with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Fiona's talking about what are you filled of and what comes out of your life? What are you overflowing this is talking about the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ. From the moment of His baptism, which was His water baptism, Jesus overflowed with the Holy Spirit. And in verse 14 of Luke 14, 4 verse 14, then Jesus armed with the Holy Spirit's power. Someone say, I'm armed with the Holy Spirit's power. That's right. If Jesus was armed, so are you today. Jesus was armed with the Holy Spirit's power. He returned to Galilee and His fame spread throughout the region. Hallelujah. How's your fame going? Is it spreading throughout the cynic rim? Because you're armed and filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Fiona talked about this this morning. You know what? And I just had a picture as Fiona was sharing communion. There's those things of bitterness or regret or unforgiveness as you keep pouring in the Word of God and the unction of the Holy Spirit, who knows that it'll, it'll flush you in a dirty jar with dirt or black ink in it. If you keep pouring the Word of God into your life, who knows that the water becomes clearer and clearer and clearer so that we don't overflow with the things that we don't want to be full of, but we overflow with the things of the life of God. Amen. And I just thank God for His Holy Spirit this morning. And it goes down to verse 16, Luke 4, 16. And when he came, Jesus came to Nazareth where he'd grown up. He went into the synagogue as he always did on the Sabbath day. And when Jesus came to the front to read the Scriptures, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to be hope. Someone shout hope. That's the same word as gospel, amen. He's going to bring the good news. He has anointed me to be hope for the poor, healing for the brokenhearted, new eyes for the blind, and to preach to the prisoners, you are set free. He says, I have come to share the message of Jubilee, for the time of God's great acceptance has begun. Who knows that we are still living in the time of God's great acceptance for mankind. We are, amen, that we are living in the dispensation of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ where the acceptance to God is the realm of which we're living in. And the Holy Spirit was the launch of this ministry for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I love these verses because it talks about the mission, the mandate. And in the same time when Jesus said, the Spirit of the living God is upon me, He's anointed me to do these things. You can take the same, same word for you today. And so the Spirit of God is on Mark today. The Spirit of God is on Fiona today. The Spirit of God is on Grace today because He has, because I have been anointed. I have been filled with hope to bring the message of God's glory, and God's wonder, amen, to liberate people, to set them free and to tell them this is their time of freedom. Hallelujah. Who knows it's a great message we carry as the church of the living God. 
Is that right? It's a great message. It's not a message of condemnation. It's not a message of let's beat up on you. It's a message of how Jesus Christ has come and made a way to set you free and cause you to live in the abundance of, of the life of which God has for you to live in. And I'm just excited this morning because I, want, I never want any Christians here today, whether you've been saved a matter of weeks or days or whether you've been born again five or ten years or for some of you it could be 30, 40 or 50 years born again. Who knows you need to carry the same passion and the same desire as the first day you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. The first day you were accepted by God through the power of the Holy Spirit, amen, that you carry that peace and that joy on the inside of your life. And I'm going to give you a little key this morning. There's been a key in my life as we go forth here today. I'm going to get, go quickly, but I'll, I'll, we won't get through it all this morning. John 14, verses 16 and 17, Jesus speaking here. And Jesus said, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another comforter. Or another translation says, give you a Saviour. Everyone shout Saviour. This is Jesus speaking. And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Saviour, the Passion translation says the Holy Spirit of truth, and he will, be, he will be to you a friend, everyone say a friend, just like me, and he will never leave you. Someone say never leave me. Amen. Hallelujah. The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him, but you know him intimately because he remains with you and he will live on the inside of you. Hallelujah. This is good news. The Holy Spirit, has a number of words that you could use to describe it. But not all of these words depict the fullness of what the Holy Spirit means, but I'll give you a couple today. The Holy Spirit means a helper. This translation calls Him a Saviour. You know what the Holy Spirit carries is exceptional knowledge. Protocol. Who knows? You don't know how to act sometimes. Who knows? The Holy Spirit will show you. The Holy Spirit is also has quite persuasive speaking abilities. He'll show you how to talk, how to speak at the right time. I looked up this note in the Passion Translation on these verses and the Greek word used here is parakletos, a technical word that could be translated a defence attorney. Who's ever needed an attorney? Huh? Who knows that you can be falsely accused at times? Who knows that the enemy himself would want to accuse you, even bring up your past again, but you have a defence attorney in heaven called the Holy Spirit who says that is no longer current in this person's life. Isn't that great news today? Someone say, I'm thankful for a defence attorney. A defence attorney. Yeah, yeah. What it means is one call to stand next to you as a helper. Someone say, I thank God for a helper today. Various translations have rendered this word, parakletos, as counsellor, comforter, advocate, encourager, intercessor or helper. However, none of these words alone are adequate and fall short in explaining the full meaning. This translation, the Passion has chosen the word Saviour for it depicts the role of the Holy Spirit to protect and defend and save us from ourself and our enemies and keep us whole and healed. Woo! I'm talking about the work of the Holy Spirit, the one who comes alongside of you, who has your defence attorney, who says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. This scripture just said, he is the one, he will defend you and he'll save us. Who knows we need saving from ourselves? Anybody? Who knows we think dumb thoughts at times? Or is it just Pastor Mark? I've heard Pastor Grace think a dumb thought. You know why? It's not a secret. Because you know what happens when you think a dumb thought, who knows you speak it out? Is that right? I did it the other day. I was coming down the steps in the attic here. And I'm stepping myself down and I dropped something. I thought, you stupid idiot. Who knows that, who knows that you shouldn't do that to oneself? Because I'm not stupid and I'm not an idiot. Hallelujah, because I've got the Holy Ghost living on the inside of me. Hallelujah. And he says, you're not stupid, Mark. You're anointed. 
You are called by God to make a difference. You're, and it was just a simple trip up thing, but who knows, we say some dumb things at times about ourselves. But the Holy Spirit goes to work on our behalf and says, that's not who you are. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And He said, He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll help you in your journey of life. So I just love this little breakdown of this word here in this Scripture in John 14. It talks about we've saved us from ourselves. We've been saved from our enemies. And He's here to keep us whole and healed. Pastor Wendy, for living in divine health. The Holy Spirit comes to keep us whole and healed. He is the one who guides and defends, comforts and consoles us. Keep in mind that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. He is our Saviour. Amen. The Aramaic word parakletos, which is taken from two, two root words, parak, which means to end. Someone say to end. It means finish or to save. Hallelujah. Parak. That means to end, finish or save. The last part of the word, lita, which means the curse. So in a nutshell, what a beautiful picture. The Holy Spirit comes to end the work of the curse of sin in our lives and to save us from every effect. Hallelujah. It means the Redeemer who ends the curse in our lives is the work of the Holy Spirit. Woo! Someone say parakletos. Woo! The one to redeem us from the curse. Hallelujah. He's not just wafting out there. He comes and resides Himself and joins Himself to your life today. Comes along to guide, to comfort, to counsel, to stand by you and lead you into victory to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you know what? So I'm laying this foundation today because many times we, the Pentecostal church, just get labelled that babbling, tongue-talking group of people down there. But can I tell you, I'm laying this foundation because we are more than babbling tongue-talkers, although I'm going to speak about that a moment today. But this is the framework of which the Holy Spirit comes. He came to redeem you from the curse and the effects thereof. Hallelujah. To the glory of His name. So you want to have Him engaged and energised in your life. The reason why we've got so much if it's like vigour and life in our lives, we're talking about some 10, some 20, some 30, some 50 years along the journey is because of our acknowledgement of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to the glory of His name. Amen. Amen. Woo! It's true. And so the very thing that we can be criticised for, the very thing that you might be bagged out for, some people say tongue-talking, is of the devil. Well, I defy that because it's interesting how the, the uh, um, 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 Fiona just read Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and it says, They were baptized with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. Well, it's a funny thing if it started with the devil, how it, or started in the book of Acts, how it ends up in the devil's camp. Just put it out there. How does, it, how does something that launched on the day of Pentecost by the living God, how does that vocabulary end up now as glorifying Satan and one of his works? The truth is it doesn't, hallelujah. You can't put those two pictures together. You see, how come? You see, I'm talking about believers who've been saved and born again for maybe a few months or a couple of years or 10 years or five years or 50 years. How do you stay on fire? How do you stay attached to the life of God and be so enthused about the things of God as you were the day you got born again? It's because of the baptism of the Holy Spirit today is what sets your life ablaze in Jesus' name. We used to sing an old chorus growing up in my Pentecost days when I was a boy. Oh, the Holy Ghost will set your feet a dancing. Oh, the Holy Ghost will fill you through and through. Oh, the Holy Ghost will set your feet a And set your heart a dancing too. Oh, praise ye the Lord. I tell you, I won't sing, otherwise I'll clear the building. I'll stay with preaching. But you get the drift this morning, Amen. Come on, let's, we will never, and listen, in the world, across the globe, the pressure is on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to back away from this very, very powerful truth. 
that pressure has always been there, but it's intensifying where the world systems are calling or deeming this activity to be illegal. But we are saying it's part of the covenant promise of the living God. And the church of the Lord Jesus Christ should engage in Pentecostal activity to stay alive and fresh and vibrant for the time on the season we're living in right now. Is that okay this morning? Hallelujah. I pray you're with me this morning. Don't, don't, don't arc up and go, oh, that's it. I thought I was in a good church. Someone shout, we are in a good church. Hallelujah. And I'm sharing this key today unashamedly that this is the way forward for the church of the living God. Amen. To the glory of His name. Many of you, most of you have experienced this. There's friends here this morning, possibly that have never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Today, in a few minutes, you'll be given an opportunity to do that, to receive Him as your firstly Lord and Saviour, as you surrender your life to Him. Secondly, you can receive, after you've received Christ, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire for your life with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Some of the great men of old said the, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the doorway or it's the gateway to the realm of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit in your life. Sometimes it's very, not very often that you find very many people that have never entered through this doorway of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Very, not very often do they ever prophesy by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Hardly ever do they have words of knowledge or operate in that realm of God without firstly experiencing this evidence of speaking in tongues. As a powerful, powerful prayer language, it's both personal and it's corporate. Hallelujah. And we'll look at that in maybe the weeks to come if the Holy Spirit allows us to go there. Is that okay today? Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is wonderful. This is a beautiful picture of the Holy Spirit. It comes to end the work of the curse of sin in our lives and to save us from its every effect. Hallelujah. Paracleta means a redeemer who ends the curse to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise His name. I'm talking about an experience today, an experience or encounter that you cannot take away from someone who's had the experience personally. Come on, people can talk about and try and quote and misquote the Scriptures and say, well, it's not for today or it's all passed away. But once you're talking to a man or a woman today who've experienced this, who've had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, with a heavenly prayer language, you're talking to someone whom you cannot take it from them because we have experienced something that's still working today as it worked in yesteryear and it'll benefit your life to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Woo! I feel the anointing of God here today in this house. And sometimes it's good to lay it out simple, plain and strong because we're fighting against principalities and powers of darkness that want to resist the kingdom of God and cause the church to become of none effect. Amen. They're quite happy for you to give out food or to you know, run around, do a few nice things, have a nice smile. But we are about delivering people and setting the captives free, seeing salvation come to the life and seeing lives turned and transformed by the transformation power of the living God. It doesn't come just through nice chats, but it comes through people bringing power into their lives for the glory of God. Amen. You can talk at a coffee club and talk things, but unless you get the power of God on your words, on your language, nothing changes. But once you realise and acknowledging God's anointing on your life, when you begin to speak to people, whether it be public, small group, one-to-one, -one, when the anointing hits your life, something begins to shift and change. Amen. And lives are transformed by the power of God to the glory of His name. That's how this church was birthed, amen. And that's how it will continue to the glory of His kingdom and to the glory of His praise. Praise His name. Woo! Praise the Lord. I love this verses in Isaiah. I'm going to just read a couple of Bible verses here. Isaiah 40, verse 28. It says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not faint or grow weary. There is no searching of His understanding. He gives power. Someone say He gives power. He gives power. 
He gives power to the faint and the weary. And to him who has no might, he increases strength and causes it to multiply and to make it abound. The Amplified Classic. Isn't that good news? Come on, listen, I just refuse to be a person who is faint or who is weak or weary in our lives. It says here, God does not grow faint or weary and there is no searching of His understanding. He gives power today to the faint or the weary. Hallelujah, who ask Him. It says that even the youths, sorry Ryan, shall faint and be weary and select the young men shall feebly stumble and fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord who expect, look for and hope for Him and entwine shall change and renew their strength and become powerful. Hallelujah. They shall lift up their wings and mount up close to God as eagles, mount up to the sun. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint or become tired. Hallelujah. I've decided today that I'm one of those believers because if that's God's, that's the way He is, that's the way we should be. I will not grow faint or weary, hallelujah. But I shall rise up on eagle's wings. Though we may run naturally and trip and fall, by the Spirit of God we shall not fall, but we shall run and not grow weary in Jesus' wonderful name because of the life of the Spirit of God lives inside of us. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, another small passage of Scripture this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. Paul speaking, he says, As for myself, Harvest Point Church, when I came to you, I did not come proclaim to you the testimony and evidence or mystery and the secret of God concerning what he has done through Christ for the salvation to men in lofty words of eloquence or human philosophy and wisdom. Paul says, For I resolved to know nothing, to be acquainted with nothing, and to make a display of of the knowledge to be acquainted with nothing but to make a display of the knowledge of nothing and to be conscious of nothing among you except Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and Him crucified. And I was in, passed into a state, he said he was weak, fear, dread, and great trembling after I had come to you among you. And my language and my message were not set forth in persuasive, enticing and plausible words of wisdom. But they were in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power. A proof by the Spirit and the power of God operating on me and stirring in the minds of the hearers the mostly holy emotion and thus persuading them so that their faith or so your faith may not rest in the wisdom of man or man's human philosophy, but in the power of God. Woo! Hallelujah. Could you capture all that? It was a lot of words, wasn't it? Let's try this translation. My brothers and sisters here at Harvest Point Church, when I first came to proclaim to you the secrets of God, I refused to come as an expert, trying to impress you with my eloquent speech and lofty wisdom. For while I was with you, I was determined to be consumed with one topic, Jesus, the crucified Messiah. I stood before you feeling inadequate, filled with the reverence for God and trembling under the sense of the importance of my words. The message I preached and how I preached it was not an attempt to sway you with the persuasive arguments, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. For God intended that your faith not be established on man's wisdom, but by trusting on His almighty power. (laughs) Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where we read. We can read in the book of Isaiah and we can read in Corinthians and all we find is that we humans need to be people who are reliant upon the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Amen to equip us and to empower us for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. This message is titled, The Unlimited Language of the Holy Spirit. The Unlimited. Someone say unlimited. Unlimited. Who knows that our English language, and like Paul said, he said, I can put together, or I could probably pay someone to put together some 
a string of eloquent words that I can talk them out. But he said, I choose not to do that, but I just come to you simply as I am and I bring to you today the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And on the bearing of that, as you acknowledge the blood and the power of His cross today, you receive forgiveness for your sin in Jesus' name and then you get filled with the Holy Ghost. And it's on the basis of that can we go forth. And I'm speaking this way this morning because we want to release and empower a generation of Everybody of Harvest Point Church into the harvest field, amen, for the great harvest of souls. And you won't do it with the eloquence or the understanding of man's knowledge, but you will do it as you are graced by the power of the Holy Spirit upon your life, amen. There's a Holy Spirit, as we've heard testimonies after testimonies from many of you, but even more recently, if we hear stories from Janet, as she goes down and talks to a man in the middle of the supermarket shop and says, hey, you, sir, this and that about your life. And he goes, huh, how would you know that? Well, I tell you what, that's by a drop in of the Holy Spirit and speaking word to the core and to the heart of men, women's being. Shelley and Emmanuel do it every, week, every month at the markets down there. But is it and Jim Boom, Parker, Bombrete, Siki, Nandora, Abuna? Thank you. Mm. That place. Yeah. And they speak to the hearts of men and women, not eloquence of a big thing, but they speak to the very heart and the core of being, which says, Wow, how did you know that? Who told you? Why are you speaking words? That's exactly how I've been feeling. And God goes straight to the heart of the matter and sets them free in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. This is all called the ministry of the Holy Spirit in a person's life. Several years ago, when we lived far out west, we had many dry times. And I had to use a chainsaw to harvest mulga trees to feed the cattle and the sheep. They eat the leaves instead of the grass on the ground because there's no grass on the ground. Yeah. <coughs> and you know what? I would go out day after day and do this. One week I went shopping and bought a brand new chainsaw. So I had two, one for me and one for my son. Who thinks that's a good idea? Once the boy gets strong enough to pull the cord, Charles. But you know what? God forbid that if I ever took my son cutting mulga to feed the cattle, that I, that I passed him the chainsaw. I bought one today. It's a little one. I found it in the back shed. But God forbid that I said, come on, son, let's go. Seven o'clock, let's hit the paddock, eh? Chainsaw for him, hop on his motorbike, sits on, on your lap like that. A chainsaw for me and away we go. Had a box made up. I had a five litre and a five litre petrol and a five litre oil and some sharpening equipment. It sat on the back of the carryall. And away we go to feed the cattle. But God forbid that I pass my son the chainsaw. So he goes, son. I'm going this way, you go that way. Have a good day. And he'd go out there and go, oh, okay, Dad. Yep. Here's a tree. Mm -hmm. Man, this is hard work. <laughs> Meanwhile, I went this other way. I was over here. There's no noise, come from my son's patch. I'm there, someone have a bit of fumes. I did it for the young people because I know they could handle it. And my son's over here. Man, this is hard. How does Dad get them trees down? <laughs> but listen, how irresponsible for me, the father, not to tell the son 
that this thing has a motor. Power. It has power yeah. behind that bar. Right. Come on. I'm over here carving trees down, feeding the cattle, the cattle come like droves. Listen, this, but this is what some, some Christians reject the power. Yeah. Some churches reject the power. And they're happy over here having a little time with their saws and they're just playing. I'm, not, I'm just saying, my heart cries out to them today. Listen, we are living in a day where we're going to see an influx of people who are going to receive the power of the living God for their Christian life. Amen. Because I just read to you an explanation. I did it purposely. He came to redeem you from the curse that was against your life. Amen. Amen. And set you free and give you the authority of victory. Not over here going, oh man, this is hard. And meanwhile, people are walking away from church. They're walking away from religion because it's too hard and you cannot do it by yourself. You could be saved thinking you're on your way to heaven and you most probably are, but you're not living in victory nor are you achieving anything because you haven't been told there's a power beside it and you can start the motor. I showed my son how to start the motor. So he ended up carving more timber than I did because he's younger and stronger than me. Hallelujah. So we want to release this generation that's coming up behind us, not give them a powerless... Come on, no power gospel. We want to give them a gospel that has power. Take it, man. Hold it. Come on, I, I didn't just give my son a chainsaw. I said, son, this thing has a motor and you have to start the motor. Come on, you might have received salvation. You can receive the saw, but unless you are shown, there's got a motor in there and you need to start that bad boy. Yeah, come on. Come on now. Come on, church. Come on. This has been a key in my life, and I'm going to talk about it till Jesus takes me home yeah. because it is a key that will help the church of the living God live in victory. What do you mean? You're just a babbling brook. Listen, I refuse to accept that because I have unlimited language of the Holy Ghost. You have too. Many of you have too. Those of you that have been born again and baptized with the Holy Ghost, come on. And I pray you start that. Some of you need to get the chainsaw out and don't just carry it around and think you're going to cut a few things up. You need to get that bad boy started, amen? amen. As we say in the bush, kick it in the guts. Yep. Yeah. I hope you don't mind a bit of bush talk here at Harvest Point Church. It'll do you okay. Won't it, Pastor Greggy? He likes it. <laughs> it's nice to call him Pastor Greggy. He's going, who's he talking to? Someone say, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit and power. So where's that, Pastor Mark? Let's have a look at the book of Acts, chapter 1. Let me show you in the Bible. I said to Pastor Grace, oh, I'll just show them the chainsaw. Hey? She said, no, start it up. Start it up because they'll remember this first Sunday of July yes. in 2024 where that crazy pastor started the chainsaw and smoked out the youth and young adults with two-stroke fumes. They nearly all passed out on the front row. It wasn't from the Holy Spirit. It was the fumes of the two-stroke motor. But I tell you what, they'll remember that story. You will remember this story in years and weeks to come. You need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Otherwise, you're a chainsaw that's never been started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want fruit from your life, if you want effectiveness from your life as a Christian, you need to start the power, the motor of the Holy Ghost given to you and set your life ablaze. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, it just doesn't feel like, don't go by what you feel. This Christian life, you didn't get saved because you felt saved. You got saved because you believed in your heart and you accepted with your life that, and confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord and something happens inside of you. And it's the same with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. With the evidence, you've got to believe it by faith, receive it. And you say, I'm going to talk in tongues. I refuse today for people to tell me that it's not for them. That's right. I refuse to listen today. It will say, 
Listen, Mark, I'm saying, I can, you can tell me all you want. What do you want to tell me? But this is for everybody. Yeah. This is for every believer. Yeah. Yes, you do get to choose, but I'm encouraging you, choose the power, power. today. Amen. I will not believe this for some and not for others. I will never take on board this for this or that one. Or if God wants to heal and endow me, he said, just receive it. Come on, well, while the boys were preaching in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10, they were talking and preaching. It says the Holy Ghost fell in the meeting and they all began to speak in other tongues. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, come on. We heard a conference this week. We did hear a conference that what the church needs to look like is like the book of Acts. Yeah. And we prophesy for Australia that the church or INC church or Harvest Point churches will look like a book of Acts church, amen, as we see a move of God, as we see a revival touch the hearts. Because unless you have a revival in your heart, it will not affect those out there. But bless God, we are having a revival and you are having a move of God today because you realise that there's a power that needs to... Did we read Acts chapter 1? Time to knock it off. Man, that smells good. Can you smell the fumes? Everyone take a big deep breath of Holy Ghost right now. Oh. All the real men are going, this is my kind of church. Good. Let me read Acts 1 verse 4. And being assembled together. Oh, Pastor Mark, I do my Christian faith by myself at home. No. No. Oh, how much have you heard that? I, I'm just a Christian by myself at home. Let me read to you the Bible. Acts 4. And being assembled together with them, Jesus with them, he commanded them, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said you've heard from me. Hallelujah. We just read it in John 14. Now we're in Acts 8, 1. For John truly baptised with water, but you shall be baptised with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 8. But you shall receive depression. You shall receive sadness. You shall receive sickness. No, it doesn't say that. No. You know too well. You, it says, you shall receive power. power when the Holy Ghost comes upon your life yeah. to be a witness. to be withdrawn, no. hiding away, no. just surviving no. so that you can make it to eternity. No. Let's take you out the back and take care of you now then if that's what you want to do. No, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Paul, you're laughing. No, mm. he knew. No, he said, you shall receive power once the Holy Ghost come upon you to be a witness for me. Hallelujah. A witness. You shall be in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Someone shout, I receive power today. I receive power today. Ma, ma, to siki, manda. Someone shout power. power. Someone say, I receive the power today. Yeah, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And you be a witness. Come on, who wants to be a witness today? Come on, this thing is pretty useless without a motor. But God put a motor of His Holy Ghost on the inside of you and said, I want you to be a witness for me. Come on, you can cut down some plans of darkness. Take some devils off at the knees. Come on, cut some demons up. Cut them into a thousand pieces. Hallelujah. Come on. Some of you got to get some trees of life and feed yourself on the promise of God. Someone shall I receive power. I'll give you a few fumes over this side. Doors are open, it's okay. 
You can leave any time at this church, you know that. There's no guards keeping you in. Come, listen, if you want to be, come up the front. We never got to even no main points this morning, but who knows we laid the foundation. You will remember the chainsaw in church. Greggy, you're right. I'm just going to finish preaching. Let me finish preaching. That's good. Come, just park over there. Now listen, he'll get some. Some of you thinking Mark's lost his marbles. I have not lost my marbles. Hallelujah. Hmm. And we've had some backlash and we've had some people mock and laugh of us and they probably will in the future and they'll probably write things on the internet about Christian Outreach Centre, INC, Harvest Point Church, but as it, and the churches in Australia, but we decided, we have decided, it doesn't matter what they write, it doesn't matter what they say, because you can't take an encounter or experience from a person who's experienced the life of God. Come on. I've done Christianity with no motor and I've done it with power and who knows power is better. Quick example, some of our families, you're probably the similar. I can speak respectfully of some of Grace's family branches of the tree. Does that make sense? Branches of the family tree that never experienced and took on board the power of God. And some 20, 30 or 50 years later, the difference between the family branch of that tree and to the branch of Leela Hovey and her daughters and their families is vastly different because they accepted the power of the Holy Ghost in their life and what it would do and transform the families and the generations to come. I'm just showing that as an example. It's probably the same in your family. You can all know stories. So I encourage you, do not bash. Do not talk down. Do not negate. Do not withdraw from. Do not shrink back from the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost in a born-again believer's life. Amen. I just read to you, this is not for the unbeliever. So it's got nothing to do with the devil. It's got everything to do with Jesus Christ and a person acknowledging Him as Lord and Saviour. And then the mighty Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit comes in you when you get saved for salvation, but there's an additional experience called He will baptise you with Holy Spirit and fire. Hallelujah. And some people are going to catch fire. Now, it's not just today, but I'll pray for people this morning because next week we are, we're going to unpack a few more things. What's the benefit? How does it work? How does it happen? And look, look at more Bible examples of how this thing works. Is that okay? Yeah. I need to finish up now because it's already 10 past going home time. I get it. Hallelujah. Someone say, I receive today. Holy Spirit. Can we all stand on our feet this morning? I'm going to close this meeting. Your children are amazing. I love you coming and playing in church on the floor. It's beautiful. It's so good. You never, ever annoy me. That's lovely. Let me just say to you, the children on the floor never annoy Pastor Mark. It's never a problem. The noise doesn't bother me. Don't let it bother you today. Just be thankful that the children are in church, that they're brought by Grandma or the parents today, and that they come and enjoy the presence of God because in His presence is fullness of joy. Some of you, I'm praying today, you are believing God for your children. Some of you are believing God for your grandkids. They have drifted a little bit. But I today, this is what we need, the church full of the fire and the power of God to pray them back in, amen, and believe God. Some of them have walked away because they got hurt and bitter and they never saw the reality of the power. They never saw the reality of the motor that's available for their lives. And they said, oh, we don't want religion, we walk away. Everybody standing here this morning looking at me. Father God, I thank you for the, the anointing of God here this morning. Thank you for heaven's ability to be present here this day. Lord, as you touch hearts from the front to the back today, Lord, there's a new generation that's going to come into Harvest Point Church. There's a new wave of glory touching this scenic rim Logan 
Gold Coast, Southern Down District. Father God, there's a new wave of your spirit touching your people today. Lord, we're not here to argue about we believe in this or that thing and this thing and that thing. I'm not here to argue with anybody about your belief or your doctrine. I'm here to minister the power of God and see lives saved and set free. If you want to talk about that, go find somebody else who cares, who's interested and have a discussion with them. But we're here to lead people into victory and see the power of God work in your life. I'm just telling you straight up, don't come to me with all the rubbish of the books you read and the videos you watch that's about some other nonsense. Come on, just get back to the real thing and allow God to work in your life. Allow God to move powerfully through your life. Go get somebody and bring them to salvation. And if you can, bring them to church, amen, and let the power of God touch their life. Bring them to firm foundations. Bring them to living in divine health and see God work in their life powerfully. Stop arguing and talking about things that don't matter. I read this book, Pastor Mark. You need to read this book. No, I don't need to read that book. Hallelujah. I've got the Holy Ghost already. Now I do read books. I'm just saying that, okay? Just to calm you down. Sorry, sorry. Some people are going, I do read books. And I read the book. Hallelujah. I read the book. And I read great books written by Holy Ghost men who carry yes. fire yes. and have seen the world transform and seen people flood altars and receive Jesus. I read them sort of books, hallelujah. Right. Ugh. Fire. Just telling you, don't come and try and argue with me about it. Find someone who cares. No, sorry. I love you. <laughs> I love you today. I love you online too. Everybody's welcome. At home. Peter's camera's going, Mark, stop digging the hole. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm digging again the well of salvation. I'm digging the well of Holy Ghost and fire. We saw Pastor Barry at Diane's birthday. And he said, Mark. Pastor Henry's there. He said, boom. Pastor Grant Roger was there. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And now it's our turn. We're not going to drop the baton. Amen. I want you to catch it today. Come on, if you perhaps here today say, Pastor Mark, I've never ever received the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Saviour. If I were to die tonight, I don't know where I'd go, whether it be heaven or hell. There's only two options, friend. And if you, if you choose not to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, hell is the option. But if you choose Jesus, if you respond to His love and say, I need to know Jesus Christ as my Savior Lord, you can flip your option from the eternity in hell to the option of eternity in glory with the Lord Jesus Christ, just where Leela is right now, rejoicing in the Father's throne. Amen. You can respond today. Come on, this church is about the harvest. So every Sunday we say, would you like to receive Him today? If you're not sure if you know Jesus Christ, why don't you firstly say, Pastor Mark, I'm not sure if I was to die today where I would go. If you want to be sure, friend, you'd say, I want to simply commit my life to Him this day. What do I have to do? The Bible says simply believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And confess with your mouth that He is your Saviour. And the Bible says, you shall be saved. Not maybe. Not if you say three Hail Marys or go to confessional somewhere. It says, if you believe in your heart and speak with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord. The Bible says, all of your sin, all of your wrong, all of your misdemeanors will be washed away by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If that's you, friend, though, quickly, I want to ask you, what you just, sometimes we say, put your hand, I want you to ask you, quickly, come to your seat, come stand with me right now. So if that's you, I want, to, I want to invite you to come right now, come and stand with me. We'll pray together this day. Quickly come, that's you. If you want a friend, ask them, are you sure? Come on, ask them. If you want a friend, say, ask them, are you sure today? If you were to pass from this earth, will you go to heaven? I'm sure bring them right now in Jesus' name. Quickly come, 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 come. Come, 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 come. Come on, church, just 